uh, restore. And uh, yeah, almost uh, one third of our presentations were around Oraset, which is very good. So it shows that, uh, well, there's a lot of information and uh, we are very glad that you are sharing this all open source with us. And uh, we're going to see then in the future the offspring of, of the of the seeds that you are sitting now. <laughs> and uh, so the next talk um, is given by Risto. He's a master student at um, uh, of systems engineering at the uh, Portland State University. And he is in the Oracet project since 2017. Uh, so he also works, and this is maybe a kind of a not uh, uh, it's a not a well-known secret now. It's that you're in a space company that is using Oracet to ex um, to design a commercial space mission. Uh, but maybe I should have not uh, said it now because it's still a secret, or maybe it's not a secret anymore. You let us know. Um, so the talk is about um, using uh, well doing mission planning for Oracet and using Eclipse Papyrus uh, SysML. Uh, Eclipse is is this framework. Uh, um, uh, Eclipse rich uh, uh, Java based framework, uh, but it provides you the tool to uh, to do SysML diagrams, and I have invested myself time in this uh, as well. And um, so I'm very interested to hear about your experience and uh, to see your slides and to hear your talk. So the stage is yours. Please go ahead. Right. Thank you, Audrey. And everybody here. Can everybody hear? Yes, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Hello, everybody. I am Rifter Rushford, and uh, I'm getting feedback on this all. I'm getting this here. Okay, uh, I'll attempt to just popularize this for now. So, I'm a master at Portland State University, and I've been working on this uh, project just for the past quarter. So, it, it's not as well developed as uh, it really could be, but uh, it, it's something that I'll be working on for the next uh, several months. And uh, thank you. I'm not sure how to put it. Do you have a, a headphone that I'm, you could use? Are you hearing, were you hearing uh, me double as well? No, no, yeah, we, we hear you fine. We hear you fine, but we hear a little bit of noise at the back. Now I'm getting out. <laughs> Interesting. Just keep talking uh, and, and go on. I think it's OK. I just muted my computer, uh, but you should still be able to hear me through the mic. Is this better? Yeah, it's much better. Yeah, there is not the noise. OK, let, let's just go with this for now. Uh, it, it's, it was hard to talk over myself. So I'm going to go through this really quickly. You've probably seen plenty about PSAS, uh, but it's in the slides in case uh, these get shared and people want to see it. We're an extracurricular interdisciplinary group really focused on uh, hands-on student projects. I've been very involved in the uh, interdisciplinary part. Uh, my focus on the ORSAT project since 2017 has uh, mostly been in the realm of project management and administration. And then uh, once I got into grad school in fall 2019, I started learning about systems engineering. And I'm excited that this will be my first uh, semi-publication uh, in the area of systems engineering on the ORSAT project. Uh, you've probably seen this uh, picture already. We're a group that does uh, amateur rockets, and uh, the flight computer of our rocket became increasingly sophisticated. And uh, at some point, 
we realized it wasn't all that different from a cube set. Uh, and then where I came in was actually right after this proposal was submitted. So I won't take any credit for that, but I did come in just before we got the acceptance letter from uh, from NASA CSLI and I've been involved ever since. So the importance of mission planning uh, to, to put a little bit of a foundation on this presentation, uh, part of what has motivated me to uh, start working on this is uh, uh, lessons learned through the ORSAT project, uh, th things that we've, uh, troubles that we've encountered along the way that we're like, okay, uh, that, that might have been uh, something we should have considered or we did think about it, but we didn't really uh, plan well around it. And so uh, that, that was part of what got me interested in systems engineering and uh, uh, this model-based systems engineering project. So yeah, for mission planning, I'm sure you all know this, space is hard and uh, you can't think of everything, um, at least not right off the bat. So having a model that you can work with as you go is very useful. Uh, it, it's hard to plan for. There are a lot of requirements. Uh, th this is just a subset of all of the requirements that you have to plan for. Uh, th this is an example of a requirements diagram, uh, by the way. Uh, th there's a lot of context. Uh, you've, got, you've got your mission enterprise, you've got your spacecraft and various other uh, organizations and entities. Uh, you've got your space environment and, and all these things affecting your mission that you have to plan around and interface with. Uh, there are complex scenarios that you have to be prepared for. Uh, this is a use case diagram for the ORSAT live mission, which I'm very excited about when we finally get that up into space. And so it really helps if you can track and trace all of it. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's really what this, uh, uh, what, what I'm working on is a tutorial to use this uh, Eclipse Papyrus tool, which this is a screenshot of, uh, to help make it easier to build models that can facilitate uh, uh, growing the project uh, from, from your initial concept as it grows in complexity and to, to manage uh, and trace the requirements along the way. Uh, SysML uh, stands for Systems Modeling Language. It's uh, it's an extension of UML. So if anybody here is familiar with that, uh, it's very similar. It has some modifications from the UML2 specification, plus some additional diagram types. Uh, the, the thing about it is uh, like everything is specified so that anybody who's familiar with the specifications can look at any diagram and understand what's going on, hence the uh, language part of it. And so that's, that's to give uh, everybody working with the model a common basis for analysis and design. And then Eclipse Papyrus, as uh, Arthur mentioned earlier, it's an open source project to provide an integrated environment for editing UML and SysML models. It, it's built on the Eclipse platform. And uh, it, I've found it to be very useful, uh, but not always intuitive to use. Uh, inspirations for this are also uh, space mission engineering. I've been using this very heavily uh, with my work to develop my workflow. And then SysML Distilled and Architect and Spacecraft with SysML are great resources on using SysML, uh, but they don't really, they, they show you what the end product should look like and they, they explain the pieces, but they don't really have to tell you how to put it together. Um, and, and that was the point for this slide. 
and hence this tutorial. Uh, I will say it's it's very much a work in progress right now. I only have a, a couple of sections uh, that are currently up, but they are available on GitHub. If you go to the ORSAT GitHub page, it's under ORSAT mission planning. And I have uh, these two sections. This one tells you a little bit about SystemL and how to install Eclipse Papyrus. And this one uh, tells you how to start a project. And the next one that I have up will be about doing the stakeholder analysis, uh, hopefully in the next week or so. And uh, so, yeah, if anybody wants more information, uh, check out the ORSAT website. Uh, you've got the full ORSAT resource at github.com slash ORSAT. Uh, you can talk, contact the PSAS group at aerospace at pdx.edu or contact me directly at risto.rushford at gmail.com. And let me turn my sound back on, sorry. Awesome. Okay, Risto, that was very good and very fast also. So we have plenty of time uh, for questions. So the audience can either write a question in the chat or just uh, shout out. Andrew is typing. Can you talk about how to get started on Papyrus? Yeah. And I actually also have a follow on question on that. Mm -hmm. Maybe Papyrus and Topcase. But let's first go with the how to get started with Papyrus. Sure. Am I able to do this? Ah, you can do screen sharing. Yeah, you, if you want to open that. You want link. to do screen sharing if you want to do that. At the moment, you see the presentation from the conference. So you're in presenter mode, and on the bottom, there's these four buttons, and the very right one, exactly, we found it. Mm -hmm. OK, so uh, I think I can just type in this. I can spell. So you can go to org slash virus. And the download page. It's it's actually very easy to download. Setting it up is difficult. So whatever it is, you have um, it's the second one. Download it. It will download as a zip file. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, Finish it. Looks like that's going to be it. Uh, just unzip it and change the directory you want to use to work from and uh, go into there. Click the clips button for the. Okay, while you're doing it, maybe uh, us, Andrew, or you, you, do you know about uh, uh, because there's not many. Um, System uh, open source editors out there. Uh, I, I followed once a project called Topcase. I'm not sure if this is still active, but this was also Eclipse uh, based. Um, but Topcase. Yeah. It seems Topcase was. Top case, yeah. Uh, it seems that uh, case, like a case, good case. And then ED. So it seems like this, this one was uh, abandoned and uh, Papyrus is now the, the, the default. So we are going the right way. Um, OK, do we have some more questions because this is also modeled by system engineering, right? And SystemL is one of the many, or not many, but one of the languages to use for 
model-based system engineering. Uh, Jan Peter, he has uh, mentioned this also in the committee chat. Uh, they want to even open a, a chat group on this. So, ah, yeah, what's the difference between UML and SysML? Uh, it's... That sounds a bit like teacher questions. Feedback. Exactly. You're getting points for the right answer. <laughs> um, but it's a good question. Well, it's an actual. Okay. Okay. So the the difference is a slight. SML is based on UML. Some of the diagrams are exceedingly similar. Uh, the behaviors, state machine, like these white diagrams are all the same. The requirement parametric thing. These are brand things, and then a couple other ones that modified slide. Um, if you can see them well, this is an example of requirements. Yeah. And this is a definition. Of okay. The audio is breaking up a bit, but uh, I summarized uh, that SysML is really just a subset of UML, uh, UML being uh, the language to define software. Uh, SysML is language to define systems in the, in the world, as all well systems, and everything is just a subset of software, uh, more or less, right? So um, that's how we can understand it. Um, yeah, any more question here? How does Papyrus compare to Capella? Okay, there's another uh, MBSE tool focused on Capella is a good tool, from what I've seen. Um, I haven't looked into it extensively, but I haven't thought about maybe doing something similar uh, with Capella after I finish the world with system. It, it this is a different method mm -hmm. to accomplish. Oh. OK. Um, one more question from my side, uh, because the system L is, well, it's to support model-based system engineering. So it's model-based. It has a model, and everyone works on the same model. So it should be a centralized model, or the model should be synced with each other so that everyone works on the same thing. How does this work out in practice? Because you're starting this uh, Papyrus application, you work on it, but then how do you share or collaborate with others? So this is something I haven't figured out how to make it work, but there is hopefully a built in way to uh, manage the project via a What I've been doing, just saving everything to a specified folder and upload it back to GitHub manually. Yeah. Okay. Also, Red can say something. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I asked the question about Capella too, and I actually don't know Capella much. I just know that it covers some MBSC needs at ESA. Uh, so actually, Thales open source that. So it's, it's pretty nice that they did that. And, and uh, I think on the dimension of a CubeSat mission, uh, you can use one tool and everybody uses that tool. You exchange the file and that's quite okay. But on uh, on the bigger dimension, uh, you have different contractors, they have different tools. So what, what's happening, uh, you know, pushing forward, what's happening at the moment is that ESA is working on a data hub. This is actually a, a universal translator of, of all those tools to, to exchange data and uh, information all around that. Yeah, cool. But uh, thanks for the introduction to Papyrus. Uh, I, I've totally forgot about Papyrus. I looked at it a long time ago. And I think Jan-Peter can, can say more about that uh, data if you want to know more. 
system factory that's the project that was done yeah yes um unfortunately we're well, we have to uh, keep the schedule so i see now we're getting more and more questions Luckily, Jan Peter is going to open a dedicated chat channel on model-based system engineering, also SysML uh, topics, and even a podcast. So, Jan Peter, once you have the link, you can uh, put it here um, in the chat for Risto also to join.